Morning all, David here, uh, back after holidays etc and running around pretty quickly as usual. So I've just taken two kids off to athletics camp uh, so they can uh, be entertained during the, the sort of uh, last week of the holidays and I have another child who is being somewhat slower and is upstairs in her bedroom in her onesie still and hasn't quite emerged so she's going to be cocoon-like for a little bit longer. Um, uh, all good, uh, so the, the kind of running around that I'm doing in some ways emulates what our competition is also trying to do with their, their servers and their processors. Um, I ran some numbers recently in that you may or may not have seen uh, some interesting claims from Oracle uh, about their most recent version of the Spark chip, that it is the, the fastest per core processor uh, and uh, all those sorts of other claims. We've also been seeing some discussion about whether actually we do continue to have that uh, uh, per core performance edge over and above Intel uh, and uh, so I've been running some numbers in both areas uh, quite recently. Uh, on the Spark side of things, uh, there is a very limited spread of benchmark information available about this new processor's out at the moment. Uh, there's just some Java-based ones, uh, which of course is, is a one a bit of a favourite of, of Oracle's. Uh, they can claim a 1% uh, per core performance improvement for their brand new server over and above one of our LC boxes. The LC server in question is running at sort of 3 gigahertz, and of course we know that our processors can actually run in, in excess of 4 gigahertz. So if they want to, they can claim on that benchmark that they, they managed to beat one of our slowest, smallest servers on a per core basis. Uh, but of course we can actually then move on and show how much, very much faster we can do it uh, when we put our minds to it with the, the fastest processors which are designed for that purpose. So we are still very much ahead in that kind of area, and it does make me interested to, to see that our, our competition are still spending the significant amount of money that it takes to be able to generate new processors. Uh, they're also trying to match our claim for being able to be the fastest per core. Uh, and that it's Oracle doing it, I find very interesting, as I wonder whether they are actually finding that uh, in their exadata systems and for the workloads that they're running, whether actually the Intel chips they're using today aren't necessarily delivering what they need. Um, also, of course, on the Intel side, uh, as I think I may have mentioned in a previous vlog, uh, there is uh, there are some Intel processors which are actually uh, slightly uh, are faster, uh, that are not as fast as our systems, but are only sort of a couple of percent, 15%, if I remember correctly, behind ours on a per core basis. But they don't scale, um, and they're used very seldom in actual server-based uh, solutions we see in our com when we're competing with our customers. And so even with Power8, even after this length of time that's been in the market, it's still the fastest around, uh, and we can still be very confident about that. And of course we have Power 9 coming out in the future and that will just accelerate us even further and so we're actually in a very good place indeed while competition continues to spend money uh, trying to catch up but they can't. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh well, never mind. We shall carry on and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye now.